All right, welcome back to math. We have had a long break, so today we're reviewing mixed numbers and improper fractions. I need you on page 168 in your instruction book. It should look like this. Now in our room, I'm not exactly sure what's been happening, but some of us had done some of this work and some of us hadn't. So we're reviewing today, and we'll do kind of four pages quickly, okay? So first at the top, this page is very important. So even if you've done this and heard this, you need to make sure you understand this. So everyone turn your book the correct direction so you can read the words. All right. I need someone to read, picture it. You can read all the way down past the sticker sheets to here. Noah, go for it. Picture it. You can use a model to help you write a whole number. Oh, wait. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The problem's this. Can you start there? I scrolled down too far. Mary had fun sticker sheets showing race cars. He did not cut or divide the sheets into separate stickers. How can you write the number of number of sticker sheets as a fraction? Picture it. You can use a model to help you write a whole number as a fraction with a denominator of one. Each, rect each rectangle stands for one sticker sheet. The sheets are not cut or divided into separate stickers, so each whole has one part. Okay, good. This is the most important thing. So everyone with your pencil, we are going to draw a big shape around here to make this stand out. You need to understand this. So sometimes I make my shapes like this because these stand out to me. But when you see this page, you should notice this. You should remember it. So once you draw a big shape around it to draw attention to it, I want you to look at it and make sense of it to yourself. Okay, we're going to talk about it in a second. Look and see if you notice any patterns. Look across the top. These are our whole numbers we're very familiar with. And then look at, look at the bottom. They are the same thing. All right, Hayden, what are you noticing? It goes one, one, two, one. Like it's improper fractions. Okay, so they are after this one over one. We've got improper fractions. Does anyone notice anything else? Noah? I'm noticing that you, you usually go like like if it's eight, if you get eight eighths, that's one, and then you get sixteen eighths, that's two. But each time they're doing another two on the top. Like one once is one hole, one, one two is two holes. Okay, good. So Noah's saying when I have one whole thing, we know we can put any fraction, the same thing over the bottom, and we have one whole thing. So let's just check this one. What about this? If I have five fifths, is this true? Does that equal one whole thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What about 12 twelfths? Does that equal one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about 13 twelfths? Does that equal one? Yeah. Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. no. 13 twelfths equals oh, one. one. No. Oh. Two. oh. No. Let's raise our hand a second. Hudson, I heard you say something important. What did you just say about this? Um. It's not one. It's what? It's one. You said it's over one, right? If it was 12 twelfths, so that's one whole thing. So I've gone past one whole thing. I have one whole thing and one twelfth left over, right? One, one twelfth. So now look back at these. We know what this one one means. That means one whole thing. If I have two over one, it just means two, okay? Let me show you a trick. Really what this means, two over one, it means two divided by one. Do we all know what that is? The line means divided by. It does, okay? So I don't want you to get too confused with that with fractions, but that is exactly what a fraction line means. So two divided by one is two. So if you ever get super confused with your fraction and you see it's four over one, that means it's, it's four, okay? It's four whole things. So, um, somewhere on your page, I'm going to write a number up here. I need you all to turn it into a fraction. Let's just try it once without any more hints, and then I'll see uh, if we're understanding this. So, somewhere on your paper, like maybe here, okay, you're going to write it on your paper. Turn it, this number into a fraction. Like any number? Nope, this one. So, we have the number 8. If you need to, look at how they did this on this number line. I could keep extending this. I could go all the way up to 8. Think about how they would change an 8 
to be written as a fraction. All right, Cadence has an idea. Josiah has an idea. Abby, Hayden. Josiah, what's your idea? Eight over one. Does that match up to what they've been doing on this number line? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I am really, I mean it. Anytime you want a number, a whole number to be a fraction, you just go, okay, that's it. All right, let's try another one. I want you to write this number as a fraction. 160. Write that as a fraction. You only have to make two marks on your paper to change that into a fraction. Hudson, what do I need to do? Um, 160 over 1? Yep. Just put it over 1. Even, even if, if you do, million, million, even million, if you do like a million kids. It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. So if I wanted to turn the number 1 into a fraction, put it over 1. If I want 2 to be a fraction, I put it over 1. 3 over 1 is 3. 4 over 1 is 4. You guys seeing how this works? No. Okay, what's your specific question? What does not make sense? I got a little confused of what to write on the fraction. Okay. Well, whatever your whole number is, like let's say I say I have five whole things. If I want to write that as a fraction, the only way to do that is to draw a line and put it over one. Every single time you do the same thing, okay? So there's really not much to understand except if you're thinking about it like I explained, if I have five over one, all I am saying is five divided by one is five. And you don't even really have to get that right now, okay? But what you do need to know, if I say write four as a fraction, how would you do that, Angie? Four over one. Okay? All right. So let's go ahead. I'm going to scroll down, and you're going to need to turn your head. Looks like we did most of the next page. So go ahead and turn to page 170. And if I'm correct, we should not have done this page. Am I right? Mm, I don't. One so We did only a little bit. Work. Okay. I believe in you, Eric. You can do it. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit more just about mixed numbers and proper fractions. And this stuff's not new. The thing I just told you is the new thing for today. Okay? And was that super hard? No. Yeah. I, I no. hope we've all got it. No. Okay? All right. I need someone to read about Ms. Razdan. And, uh, yeah, read the problem for me. Abby? Okay, so first of all, it's a word problem. Some of you are doing awesome at this, and I think I gave some of you some bonus points on your test just because you did underline your questions, put them in boxes, all that stuff. So what is important in our question that we need to mark up so we don't do the problem wrong? Abby, give me one thing. Each base is one-fourth of a board. It's a board. Okay, and I'm even, you know, my brain works very visually a lot in math. So if I'm not crystal clear on something, I need to clear it up. Each base is one-fourth of a board. So just by drawing this out, that kind of helped me understand that better, okay? You don't have to do things like that, but if you need to, go for it. Um, what else is important, Hayden? Uh, she has two three-fourths boards. She has two and three-fourths boards. So is this one board? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That I already drawn? Okay. Yeah. So now that I'm reading that, I'm thinking, well, I'm going to go ahead and draw my two and three-fourths boards because that's going to help me understand this a little bit better. And so I've got all of this except one space is gone. So I'm going to shade that one out of here. I should erase this now. So each part makes one base, right? Okay. Is there anything else important? Cadence? Um, how can you write two and 
Okay, so that is the question. Let's put it in a box. I promise you guys this makes life easier. I even did this in engineering at Purdue. Those story problems can be like this long and take five pages of work. So if you're not organized, do you think you're very successful? No. So even if this feels too easy for you, now get into good habits. Okay. Now there are a few ways we can do this. One way is drawing a picture, which I have told you helps my brain make sense of this stuff. And they already did that for us here too. So we've got one, two, and three fourths of our boards. And we know that one fourth will make an art sculpture base. So that's like what they screw the sculpture on to make it stand up. So we have two and three fourths. I'm gonna write that down here so you can see it. We need to write that as an improper fraction. What does that mean? We've talked about this enough. If you forget, there's some helpful stuff over here above my head. Hayden, what's an improper fraction? Um, there's one, well, it's a bigger number above a lower number. Yes, our numerator is bigger than the denominator. So we know two ways to do this. I can either count how many one-fourths I have and let's do that first, okay? So I'll count, you count, make sure we all get it right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. 11. So I've got 11 fourths, okay? Those things are the same. Did you guys go count 11? You guys know how bad my eyes are. My eye appointment is this week. All right, so it's not always fun to draw pictures and count though, okay? And we're getting older. We don't wanna have to do it this way. I taught you all a trick last week. Good question, Andy. So first, we have, here's one whole thing, two whole things. That's where my two came from. Three-fourths came from this extra board here, okay? Now, the only thing that made me know there was 11, I just counted how many one-fourths I had, and I have 11-fourths. That's all we've done so far, okay? Does anyone remember the trick I taught you last week to get from a mixed number like this to the improper fraction, because we learned a, a shortcut. You divide, not divide, but multiply the one, the two, and then mm -hmm. add the three. She's got it, okay? So we don't have to draw a picture every time. We know this really fast trick. So everyone, somewhere on your paper, right? Four or two and three fourths, large enough that you can show your work one time. M is exactly right. We start down here in the basement and we just kind of work around in a circle, going in the direction the clock goes. So I start at my four, and I multiply by the two. So what is four times two? Abby? Um, four times two is eight. Eight. And then I kind of add on whatever's in the top. Eleven. Yep, so four times two is eight. I keep track of my eight, add on three more, which is the eleven. Is the denominator stays the same. So we got the same thing, right? So you can either draw an entire picture and count how many little spaces you've got to get 11 fourths, or you can do my trick, okay? I happen to love the trick. It's fast, it's simple. Emma? Today my mom was helping me with the homework mm -hmm. that we had on Friday. So you were using the trick? And my mom reminded me about the trick, mm -hmm. and she, she wrote it down, she would ask me what it was. Yep, so make sure we remember that. That is how from, from here on out, unless they give you a picture to count, I would go ahead and solve them this way, okay? They're a lot easier. So now, I'm gonna keep on scrolling. All right, so the model, and picture it, you guys have it so I don't, it's the, the one with all the fourths. How does that picture show two and three fourths? How can we describe that in words? And if you feel not confident in your ability to describe in words, this one's not so bad. I should see more hands. So looking at your other page, 
with all the forks. How does that picture show two and three fourths? Say? Okay. Splits it up. Okay. Did we have two whole things shaded all the way in? Yeah. And then the last shape only had three fourths? Yeah. Write that in words. Okay. If you want to borrow my words, you may, but you've all got great words, be confident. So, I will say two whole, I'm just going to call them rectangles. Two whole rectangles were filled in. So that's, that's where my two came from, two whole rectangles, because it's a whole number. And then we had three-fourths of a third rectangle filled in. writing that. I'll give everyone about 15 more seconds. You can go ahead and start reading the next one and thinking it through. Okay. The next one, we need to be able to say one hole and two holes. So, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to circle this and draw an arrow, and then I'm going to circle this one and draw an arrow over here. So I don't have to rewrite anything. So our first thing, how many fourths are in one hole? Okay, really think this through. I have one whole thing. Don't forget you can make a picture real fast. How many fourths are in one whole thing? Well, I have to count all of them, right? So how many fourths are in one whole thing? Only one person knows? Two? Three? This is like everyone should know this one. Emma? Four. Four, right? One, two, three, four. How many fourths are in one whole thing? Four. And how many fourths are in two whole things? If you're not sure, draw two whole things, split them both into fourths, and count our pieces. How many do we have? Cadence? Eight. How many fourths are shaded in the fraction strip that is not completely shaded? You're going to have to look at that other page. Okay? I need more people to participate or I will start calling some victims. All you're doing, look at the picture it. Yes? So the, the fraction strip, it's not all the way shaded on the page before this one. How many are in there shaded? How many fourths? Up on the how many fourths are shaded here? Three. Yep. Three fourths. What's the total number of fourths that Ms. Rosdan can cut from two and three quarter boards? So how many total fourths? When we did our improper fraction, we figured that out, right? What was our numerator? Noah? Um, Eleven. Eleven. So we're writing it out in words, 11 fourths, but that is exactly the same as writing it like a fraction, 11 fourths, okay? So out of all those boards, if you look at that picture, we counted there are 11 different pieces. So she can make 11 sculptures. All right, number 20. Hayden, you want to read that for me? Um, complete the sentences to, sentences to show the improper fraction that is equivalent to two... Three fourths. Alright, so if we use words, two and three fourths equal what's our improper fraction? Hayden? Eleven fourths. Eleven fourths. We need to use words. So eleven E L E V E N fourths. And I've always struggled saying the names of fractions. Hundredths and four fourths and Thousandths. So just do your best. You're all probably better than me. Fourths. All right. 
11 fourths. All right, and then we would need to use it, uh, write it as a number. So we know our trick, we've done it a bunch. To write this as 11 fourths, I could just write 11 fourths, or I could think four times two is eight, plus three more would be 11, and my denominator stays the same, 11 fourths. All right, now explain how to write a mixed number as an improper fraction. Can we explain the trick? Yes. Okay, so one step at a time. When I want to change this 2 and 3 fourths to an improper fraction, what's my first step? Where do I start and what do I do? Josiah? You do like you, you do, if you were, you do like 4 times 2 equals 8 plus 3. Okay, good. So we start in the denominator of our fraction and we multiply it by our whole number. Okay, so that's what we can write first. Smash it. Okay. Begin by multiplying. And you can write M U L T I period. That'll work for me. Begin by multiplying the denominator So we start down here and we go up to the whole number. Add on the numerator. And what can we say about the denominator, Hayden? It should be always. It should always be the same. Yep. The denominator stays the same, and we can do a d period. D stays the same, but that is important. out of the way so you all can finish writing that down. If you finish a little early, start thinking about uh, 22 and 23 down at the bottom. Leave that down there. It says begin by multiplying the denominator by the whole number, then add on the numerator. Denominator stays the same. So that will work every time. You can turn a mixed number into an improper fraction. All right, we've got a couple more to go. But great job, everyone listening today. I know we're maybe a little sleepy. We've been out of the hang of this, but nice job listening. <laughs> The yes. Straight on the line. You know, it's funny when that works out. <laughs> okay. If you don't have exactly what I've got, it's okay if you've got something similar. All Wait, right. Oh. You can you can get it. Okay. Number twenty-two. Use what you just learned about writing mixed numbers as improper fractions to solve these problems. Okay, and they even made a model for us. So on the model. Usually before I even read questions, I like to think to myself, what's being shown in this model? How many whole things are all the way shaded in? Someone that hasn't answered in a while. How many whole shapes are all the way shaded in? Cadence? Well, we've got two pieces over here, but do we have one whole circle all the way shaded in? Yeah. Kind of hard to see, but yeah, it's all shaded. So we have one and... What fraction of this one is shaded? Eric? Um, two, two fives. Yep. One and two fifths, okay? So that is what's being shown here. So now using the model, write the mixed number it shows. Oh, is that what I just did? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So you can make sense of it before you even read your question. Sometimes that helps. You need to be able to look at a picture like this and say, well, that's one and two fifths. Does anyone have a question where we got the one or the two fifths? Okay. So we can go ahead and write that on the line. This does show one and two fifths. That is the mixed number. And now we need to write the improper fraction. We have two ways to do this, right? One way, I could count how many fifths I have altogether, which would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I have seven fifths. Or what's the other way we could do it? Eric? Times. We can do our trick, okay? So remember, we start in the numerator, always down downstairs. Five times one is what? Hayden? Uh, five times one is five. Five, and then I have to add on two more, which would be, seven. Josiah? Seven. Seven. So I got the same thing both ways, okay? So it's up to you totally. If you have a picture, you can count how many fifths you have to make your improper fraction. Or you can use our trick, multiply num or denominator by your whole number, add on the top. So the improper fraction it shows is 7 fifths. All right. <coughs> Any questions? So the things you need to know today. Number one important thing, how do I write any whole number in the entire world as a fraction? What do I have to put underneath it? Cadence? One. Okay. And if I want a mixed number, I should have a whole number in a fraction. And I can turn that into an improper fraction by using my trick or by counting my pieces. Right? All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, those of you at home. I will see you tomorrow. Um, hopefully this math wasn't too bad to get back into the swing of things.